XTZ 1217 Edge. Is it the best subwoofer under a thousand pounds? Hello again guys, welcome to Man Discovers Tech. In this video we're going to be looking at the XTZ 1217 Edge. Now a lot of you guys, you've been asking me in the comments to do a review about this subwoofer because you notice that I've got it and I've got rid of another subwoofer and replaced it with this one. So yeah, here's the review. Sorry it's taken a while but you know, been busy recently. Before we dive in guys, if you want down to earth reviews that are 100% honest and not sponsored by anyone, then you need to like this video, you need to subscribe to this channel, and that's exactly what you're gonna get. I don't take any money from sponsors, so all the opinions that I have, they're 100% my own. I don't feel like I'm influenced in any way when I'm giving you this information. So, yeah. Subscribe, or I'll eat you. Also, I'm kind of uh, doing a little competition, so have a read through that, leave a comment below. So, what is the XTZ 1217 Edge? Bit of a tongue twister, but we'll get there. What's it trying to achieve? Well, after owning this subwoofer now for a couple months, and I was researching the heck out of it um, for months before that, probably since March 2020, I've identified that this subwoofer is trying to achieve a lot of things. It's not like a typical, oh, music subwoofer, oh, that one's for movies, this one's for music. It's not that typical argument. I think that this XTZ12 17 Edge is trying to achieve a lot of things. First of all, I think it's trying to be an audiophile grade subwoofer that's ideal for music. Secondly, I also think that it's trying to appeal to the movie fanatic as well. It wants to be ideal for movies. I think what it's trying to do is trying to marry the sound of a ported subwoofer, your typical ported subwoofer, with the sound of a sealed subwoofer. And I also think XTZ, what they're trying to do is give you tremendous value for money as well with this subwoofer. Let's go over a few of these features. So, just reading my list here, it has a high excursion driver, and we'll see that in the videos that I'm gonna put within this. It's got a 700 watt Class D ice amplifier, so very high quality Class D amplifier there. It has a very, very nice uh, build quality, thick MDF cabinets, critically braced, lovely lacquered finish, and a variety of finishes as well. It has additional features like parametric equalization. It has inbuilt uh, EQ modes as well. And on top of that, it gives you the option of experimenting with your sound using the foam plugs that they provide. What XTZ have done, they've varied the port lengths. So both of those holes, both of those ports are tuned to different frequencies. So you can experiment with the foam plugs to try and get the exact type of sound that you're looking for. And I think that's a very powerful thing. Personally, I think what XTZ are trying to do with this subwoofer is make it the best value for money subwoofer under a thousand pounds. And now I'm gonna tell you why. So what test material did I use when I tested the XTZ 1217 Edge for movies? First of all, as I always do, because it's one of my favorite movies of all time, I tested Lord of the Rings on Blu-ray, must be the Blu-ray, I tested um, a few scenes, but one scene I always go back to in particular is the final battle, one of the final battle scenes in uh, Return of the King. I believe it's the Battle of Pelennor Fields, you know, the one with the big olifants, elephants, whatever they're called. There's a lot of sub bass there, there's a lot of bass effects there, which is very good. Another great movie for testing um, surround sound and bass effects and all that stuff is Interstellar. Again on Blu-ray, I have the IMAX edition on Blu-ray. You've got two good sections there. You've got the wormhole scene at about one hour in, and then towards the end of the film, you've got the black hole scene. I'm not gonna say too much. I don't wanna ruin the film for anybody who wants to see it, but you've got two good, really good scenes there for bass. Like, it's so good. The third film that I tested the XTZ with was Ready Player One, which is kind of a good film. You know, I think it's okay. Not the best film, but the quality of the effects is very good. There's a particular scene, you've got two of them, you've got one at the beginning, there's a race, and there's like a King Kong, that's one scene, and there's another one, um, it's the bar scene, it's about one third the way in, that's another good one that I kind of always go back to, it's like a bar fight, I'll go to that one as well. Another thing I do is I test THX test tracks, if you go to, I think it's THX website, or there's an online website where you can download full quality THX test tracks, Dolby test tracks. I'll put it in the uh, description below if you want and you can mess around with this yourself but they're excellent as well if you want to kind of gauge how good your sound system is. Now I also tested a variety of music 
I tested many different genres of music. I can't go into all the different test tracks I use for music because I'll be here all day. But I tested, you know, some tra uh, test tracks from UK Grime, some dubstep, just to really kind of hear kind of what the bass is all about. Lots of, lots of different things, even some rock as well I played on it. I did listen to it with music as well. Now I'm going to start with the positive feedback I have. Now the first thing I'm going to say, the most impressive thing about this subwoofer for me is the value for money you get compared to what else you get for this price, right? So on the XTZ website, it says 790 euros. However, I got mine for 590 euros, okay? So it was a little bit off, it was a couple hundred euros off, which is, which is good. But for that money, what else could you buy for that money that has a 20 Hertz bass extension? It has all that customizability. It has a high excursion driver, great build quality, fantastic amplification. What subwoofer, tell me, put it in the comments below. If you know another subwoofer that's better than this one for the money, just tell me because I wanna know about it. And the second thing, which makes it even better value for money is the sound quality that you get from it. Now, I don't know if you've seen my other video. I did a review on the BK Monolith Plus. I've had two of these Monolith Pluses for like two years now. And, um, you know, I bought these because I wanted it to be excellent at movies, but I always felt like there was something wrong with it. You know, it didn't have the musicality. You know, I thought it might have a little bit. In the end, I got a bit upset with it. And for a very long time, I've been looking for a subwoofer that kind of gives me the best of all worlds. This XTZ that I've got now is so much better with bass resolution, depth, it sounds way better with music. It's got much better transient response. You can play around with the sound as well. So what I do is I put the port plug, I put it into the right hand side of the subwoofer, the right port plug. That way you retain your extension down to 20 Hertz. You lose a few uh, decibels admittedly, but you get the tightness of a sealed subwoofer and the speediness and it sounds fantastic. Hearing the sound quality now, my plan is to get two of these because I can keep one of the ports plugged and with two of them, there should be enough sound pressure to fill up my room very comfortably in movies below 30 Hertz. Another thing that I really like about it, I mean, it's not such a great thing, but it's better than the Monolith. It has an auto on off switch on the back. If you can believe it, the Monolith Plus didn't have that and neither did the Monolith before that one, which I also had. They both didn't have that. What else do I like about it? It has the option of doing parametric equalization on the back. There's controls on the back where you can adjust multiple different uh, parameters. And I haven't actually used it yet because I've connected this subwoofer to my home cinema amplifier, which has a parametric EQ built in. However, if you wanted to use this subwoofer in more of a stereo setup, what you could do, if you wanted to get the subwoofer to perfectly match your stereo speakers, XTZ sell an in-room analyzer. I'll leave that in the description if anyone wants to see it and perhaps buy it. And this room analyzer, it's a very high quality mic and some software that basically analyzes your room and it tells you the settings to input for your subwoofer and your speakers as well. So you can use it for subwoofer, you can use it for speakers. And if you have a stereo setup and you're not really interested in movies, this setting is really gonna help you, I think. Another thing somebody asked me, does the XTZ1217 does it suffer from port chuffing? And I read that before I bought it. And so far, you know, praying, you know, touch wood, so far the XTZ that I've got doesn't have any port chuffing. At least I haven't noticed it. Another good thing about this whole experience for me, I think was the delivery speed. You know, it came from Sweden, I believe, and it came within three days. So that's a good thing. And another fantastic thing, is that you get 30 days to buy the subwoofer and try it at home. So they call it the 30 day buy and try uh, trial. And I think to be honest with you, how can you beat that? You buy it on the internet, you try it in your own home, which is very, very important to do. You know, how can you beat that? I mean, you could offer 45 days or 60 days. I think SBS do that in America, but I mean, 30 days is enough. You know, that's still very good. And it's better than 90% of other companies out there, I think. So another great thing. Right, so how about the negative feedback? Negative feedback. Negative feedback. Now, to be honest with you, I've had a long think about the negative feedback with this subwoofer, and in all honesty, it's very difficult to say anything bad about this subwoofer when you consider the price that you pay, when you consider that you're 
you're benefiting from direct to manufacturer purchase here you know it's very difficult to, to say anything bad about it however I'm gonna say a few things that are bad about the subwoofer so first of all I think this subwoofer is trying to bridge that gap between the sealed units and the ported units so it's somewhere in between and XTZ call it a hybrid subwoofer themselves and I think yes it's achieving that however you don't get the huge base like you do with the monolith plus but you know the XTZ it really feels like it's trying hard on the lowest notes you can see it you can see the driver the excursion of the driver goes wild like in movies however I think it's it is designed to do that so it's within the design parameters I believe so you're not pushing to to its limits but you can tell it's trying very hard whereas the monolith you playing like 30 hertz 25 hertz bass and the driver is literally like that like it's barely moving and making the room fill up with sound so you know the, yeah the monolith reaches the lower notes more easily but the XTZ can reach them too and I reckon if you get two subwoofers I think in medium sized rooms it should definitely be okay now if you get two of these make sure you also position the subwoofer correctly you need to put it in a spot where the bass sounds the biggest and fullest in your room and you can do a subwoofer crawl if you want to find out what that position is so yeah that's a very very important thing when we're considering that this subwoofer it, it can't quite match the monolith for power so you need to position it correctly however having said that the monolith is so much worse than the XTZ for music and in movies the XTZ you can hear it it has so much better depth um, it has more focus as well like you can focus more on the front sound stage you know it's just it, the bass comes and it goes it's not hanging around it's not you know lagging or anything like that the transient response is there so you know it's your money it's your choice you know another downside is and to be honest with you this is not really a downside of XTZ it's more to do with physics the black lacquer finish it attracts a lot of dust you know I went for the black lacquer finish because I just thought it looked more fancy and I knew it was gonna be lots of dust but I just liked it in the living room so I went for that but you can get a matte black finish and a white finish as well so yeah you can do that Another downside was kind of annoying was basically I have some SVS sound path isolation feet. They're big feet like that big, right? And they isolate your subwoofer from the ground. I had this now for a couple years and these feet, they fit on the monolith. Now they don't fit on the XTZ. The XTZ has these like little feet like this big, which is kind of annoying. Um, I don't see an option on XTZ website where you know they say you can upgrade the feet or anything like that obviously you can put your own isolation underneath but I just thought that in a living room you know in a living room we're trying to keep the clutter down to a minimum as well that's the problem with this hobby you know so feet like the SVS sound path they're expensive but they do make a bit of a difference from what I've seen they don't fit on the XDZ another downside a bit of an odd one but it's the XDZ customer service now to be honest with you when they actually when you reach them they're decent guys, you know, they're pretty nice guys. You ask them the questions, they give you pretty detailed answers, but they take so long to email you back. It took them like a week to email me back in one occasion. So I think they could do a little bit better. Another downside, I know I'm saying a lot of downsides, but there are, there are minor ones, I have to say. But another downside is the price. I said earlier the price was very good, but the pricing isn't fixed, okay? And one thing I really hate is a fake sale, you know, like, when you know what the cost of something is, you know when the price is up and you know there's gonna be a sale, but you're kind of waiting, like what's the best time to buy it? I've been monitoring this subwoofer since March 2020 and I've seen it at 790 euros, I've seen it at 690 euros and I've seen it at 590 euros. So for me, that puts off the buyer. I think there should be a trust between the buyer and the seller. And if you put fake sales on all the time, it makes the, the buyer lose trust in the brand. And that brings me on to the final weakness of this subwoofer and that's the brand itself I think because I like the brand I like what it stands for I like the value for money I even like the design of the XTZ I like all that sort of stuff right but if you're a customer you're looking for an SVS or an XTZ SVS is a worldwide brand of, and, and a huge presence in the subwoofer industry XTZ need to 
make sure they improve these little things that I said earlier, like the fake sales, like the not getting back to customers. They need to improve those things to make their brand seem better. And if their brand doesn't seem that very good, then what's the resale value of the subwoofer gonna be like? I don't know. Like I know for a fact if I bought an SVS, if I sold that SVS on eBay or, or in the forums or whatever, I know that I'm gonna get quite a good return for my money. You know, I might sell it for 70% of what I bought it for. But what am I gonna sell the XTZ for? How many hundreds of pounds am I gonna lose? This is the thing to me that a good brand is very important. It doesn't have to be a luxury brand, but it has to be a brand that people can trust. Alternatives. Right, so this brings me on to the final section, which is where a lot of you guys have asked me, like, what are the alternatives to um, the XTZ? What are the alternative subwoofers in the range? So yeah, personally, I think that at this price range, there aren't that many good alternatives, but I'm gonna go through them with you now. First of all, you could get a Monolith Plus. However, for the entirety of this review, you've heard me slate the Monolith Plus. You know, it's not a bad subwoofer, okay? It's not a bad subwoofer. It does what it was meant to do, and that's play movies loud, you know? That's what the Monolith Plus does. So if you want a good subwoofer, a loud sub subwoofer, and at a good price, go for the Mon Monolith Plus. You're gonna get this SPLs that you want, but you're not gonna get the highest quality base. So that's one. A second option is the SVS SB2000 Pro. So yeah, the SB2000 Pro is the sealed box version of the SB2 uh, of the 2000 series. It's uh, about a thousand pounds. It's got 550 watts class D. I think it has parametric equalization and a smartphone app and all that sort of stuff. Now I had the SB2000, which is the predecessor to the SB2000 Pro. And I think they're probably gonna be very similar in terms of performance. Now I think my XTZ now, the 1217 Edge, definitely beats the SB2000 for movies and music combined because the SB2000, it was a little bit, obviously we expect that it's not gonna be as good for movies as it is music, but it's still decent. I think the XTZ just outperforms it because it's able to make more sound pressure. It's able to retain the tightness of the music as well. So yeah, and it's cheaper. It's about what, 40% less. So the other option is you could get the SB3000. This is a 13 and a half inch sealed subwoofer, I believe. I think it's 800 watts class D as well. I think that's more on the XTZ's level in terms of competition, it, but it is double the price. It's 1,350 pounds. And uh, I don't think it makes sense to buy the SVS SB3000 in Europe compared to the XTZ because uh, yeah, it's not direct to manufacture it anymore in Europe. We have to go to a middleman because that's how it works over here. However, you guys in the US, you guys are lucky. SVS is really good for you guys, so I'm pretty jealous of that. Another thing you could get is the PC2000 Pro from SVS, which is the cylinder version, or you could get the ported uh, the PB2000. With those subwoofers, you get very low bass extension, 16 hertz, I think, on the PC2000, a lot, much higher SPLs. Uh, I've looked at the frequency graphs as well. They easily hit over 100 decibels under, underneath 30 hertz. Thousand pounds, decent ap uh, amplification. Personally, I think it's worth a try at a thousand pounds. If you want something better than the Monolith, uh, maybe a bit better than the XTZ for movies, I would say, yeah, maybe that's a good idea, but you're probably gonna sacrifice some quality on the music. So um, yeah, the PC2000 as well, you get that full sound and you save space in the living room. So I think that's quite a good, um, option. Another option is the cinema range from XTZ. Uh, it's a little bit more money. I think it's like the eight, 900 euro mark. Forgot exactly what it was. It's more money, but it's lower in wattage. It's 500 watts, but it's, it's a bigger box. Okay. So you're going to get more sound pressure out of it. But XTZ told me themselves that the cinema range isn't really as good as the 1217 edge because the amplifier is a little bit out of date. They did tell me that the, cine the cinema edge is coming out very soon with the upgraded amplifier. So that's uh, an op another option as well. I'd personally wait for that one. Now in the USA, you guys, I mean, XTZ doesn't make much sense to you because you've got import duties to pay, shipping costs to pay. I think in the USA right now, I believe HSU is, uh, is the best option for a lot of people for subwoofers, direct to manufacturer. You know, they make very good uh, subwoofers. So I've kind of run out of ideas now for subwoofers to compare against. If you have any questions, if you want my opinion on the on the XTZ versus any other subwoofer, let me know in the comments below. I could be here all day making comparisons. So yeah, 
just ask me put it in the comments below and I'll get back to you so that's it for today guys hope you enjoyed the review give us a like consider subscribing and I'll see you next time